Five Questions with Leroy Butler. Now, here's Tom Silverstein. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2024 edition of Five Questions with Leroy <laughs> Butler. Happy New Year to all our uh, viewers, and yes, Happy New Year yes. to you. Yeah, it's been a, a good year so far. It was an interesting yeah. one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, to say the least. I had a, I had a long New Year. I yeah. was up till, you know, wee hours of the morning. Not, Were you unfortunately, out I wasn't partying. Oh, yet. okay, it was yeah. Workout. But uh, you know, I, I'm sure you watched the entire thing. What what surprised you? Well, what didn't? We, let's go back for a minute, though, Tom, because I think the, the mentality of this team is it, it seemed to be very strong because you would think one of the top uh, cornerbacks wasn't going to play. Um, that can affect your team, mm -hmm. especially playing Jefferson. Talking about Jair Alexander Jair, being yeah, suspended. Yeah, very disappointing because you really don't need to deal with that. This, it's too right. late in the season to be dealing yeah. with stuff like that. But it seems like some of these older guys can learn from the, new, the younger guys. The younger guys just play. I just want to play. I don't want to deal with no drama. But, you know, when they suspended him after a win, although it was close with Carolina, they still won the game. Um, now, had they lost and then they suspended him, people say, oh, well, he's a scapegoat. But, no, they did this after a win, and I wasn't surprised by it. No, sent a message. Yeah. Sent yeah, a well, message yeah. to everybody yeah. that even yeah. your best player can't get away. Yes. One of your best players can't get away. Well, they went through that before with another player that, you know, just let him do his own thing and he got out of control. So, you know, I, my parents used to always say there's two things you can't do. You can't be sick of somebody and you can't be tired of somebody. Or you can be. Mm -hmm. But if you're sick and tired, you got to make a change. Mm -hmm. Because the locker room is going to be affected. But think about that, Tom, going into uh, Minnesota who's starting a rookie that doesn't respect you. They're thinking this defense, who cares about who we start, Mullins or Dobbs right. or the rookie. Put the rookie out there because... These, this defense has made so many quarterbacks look like they were all made world. Made Tommy DeVito oh who my he is. God. They made, gave Bryce Young his best uh, game of the year. Desmond Ritter. I mean. uh, Desmond Ritter. <laughs> and um, Baker, Baker Mayfield. Mayfield was perfect. Yes. Um, so all that was and tracking. On. And then you're not going to have your top corner. Jefferson is the second game back. It don't matter. But for some reason, I got to give some credit to the coaches to galvanize their group to say, listen, who's with us? You don't need to raise your hand, but who's with us? Because we got a game plan that we're very excited about, and we got to get everybody on board to buy in. And, and, and you can see that from 35, number 80. You know, people don't even know these guys, Bo Melt and Valentine. And, I mean, they don't even know these guys, but these are the guys you're going to need, Tom, mm -hmm. to beat a team like Minnesota on the road. But it still come down to me. In my mind, it come down to number 10. Jordan Love was on point. I'm proud of him, man, because he's unflappable. He knew they were going to blitz. He was ready for it, it everything. It, yeah, and was the there one blitz too. that really just... Yeah. You know, threw him off where, I mean, he didn't throw any interceptions. Right. Yeah. Uh, was he sacked? I can't even remember now. Uh, I don't think so. And <laughs> and they threw stuff, and we'll show it on x yes, yes. They threw a lot of stuff, yes. and he was ready for it. Yes. Um, yeah, he's he's really come into his own, I yeah. think. And, you know, they, they'll ride his arm as long as, as yes. far as they can. Yeah. But they do need that defense to play like yeah. it did. Sunday, and you got to give uh, Carrington Valentine and Corey Valentine yes. a lot of credit. The law firm of Valentine and Valentine. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> just yeah. my vision, you tell me yeah. what you think about yeah. this, is they play the defense that's called. Yes. You know, they play yeah. their butts off. Yeah. They're not always perfect, mm -hmm. uh, but they have a plan, you know, and it's not about them. It's about the team defense. Yes. And I think sometimes Jerry Alexander gets caught up in, I have to show that I'm the best cornerback in the NFL mm -hmm. and I have to make all these plays. Yeah. When, you know, if you just do your job, you could be pretty good. Yes. You know, so I, I wonder how 
this whole thing. You, you tell me, how do you think it's going to affect him coming back? Is he going to be even more That's eager to question. prove, oh, I'm best corner and I, you know, I'm the leader of this team, or is he going to come back and be a little humbled and say, just tell me what to do? Well, you got to look at the, the analytics of when he plays, do you win or lose? And when you play the babies, do you win or lose? So do you just leave 35 and 37 out there and just have Jair as a nickelback? I don't think you can. Well, I'm just, we're just right, 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 right. right. Uh, Joe Barry got to come up with a way, but does he deserve to be out there? I mean, right. We're trying to get in the playoffs. We don't have time for uh, feelings now. Right. What was the best in their meetings? was to give us the best chance to win. Right. And by you not saying that a guy that's making that kind of money, to me, I think it was good for the team. Yeah. And and it's a tough decision they got to make. So, but if you put him out there and he wants to shut down number two, because that's where the ball's going. Yeah, right? I DJ mean, they, Moore, they're, the ball's they're going to him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's going to get all the targets. You're not worried about no. Uh, Robert Tunyon, nah, uh, Mercedes Lewis. The ball going to number two. Yeah, it's going to two. So my thing is, though, you can get some get back, play well, get a pick six. Everybody forget all about it. Get your interception, make some good tackles, play well, and play within the group. Don't go off doing your own thing, trying to prove anything. Right. And then that's what makes it tough for uh, Joe Barry and these guys, man, who's every headline's Fire, Barry. Fire. But when they put together a good game plan, it's silence. You're contributing to that because you're one of his best players and you're being kind of a knucklehead. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now this win that you in, when you get back to practice, you know, you don't need to apologize to the team, although I think you should. You don't need to do that. Apologize by playing well. When you're out there, shut down their top guy, and then all is forgotten because I mean, no one's perfect in that locker room. Mm-hmm. Well, not, especially in the 90s. We had some flaws, but we never tried to hurt the team or embarrass our coach. Yeah, I don't want uh, Mike Holmgren doing uh, mental gymnastics to explain something I did. So we try to say, no, we want to think about the opponent. Yeah. So we had game plans. If a guy had an issue or something like that, it's just like your family. Your family, everybody at the family reunion, you don't, you may not agree with some of the things they do, but you still, they're still your family. Yeah. yeah. So, and they'll welcome him back, and they'll look forward to that. But he got to take it upon himself to just play well this week. Because yeah. I'd love for him to get a pick six or something, and the crowd just goes crazy and does a leap or something, and the next thing you know, or, you're going or, into the playoffs. Or, you know, in, in my head, it's like, just shut them down. Don't do anything spectacular. Just do that your too. job. That too. You know, just yeah. make sure that he doesn't beat you. You yes. know, that's what the Packers need. If I'm a coach, is that's what I'm saying. You yes. know, you don't have to uh, have yeah. five interceptions. Just mm. don't let them catch any balls, you know. Yeah. Um, it's probably a good sign that... Um, the DBs called him after the game in the locker room, you know, and they, they were chatting with him and he was congratulating them. Maybe that's a good sign that, mm-hmm. you know, they're all together and they'll welcome him back. But, um, you know, heading into to this game, it's it's sort of a little bit of a the reverse. The Packers um, will face a quarterback who's been more established than Justin Fields. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, offers different kind of challenge. But it's not like their offense is, is prolific. It's just that, you know, sometimes they can get on a roll and score. What scares you about uh, the Bears' offense? Well, or what makes you nervous? <laughs> Justin Fields putting up one fifth on the ground, two fifth in the air, and Herbert getting the, over 100 yards right in Atlanta. Yeah. And, you, you think about if they get the running game going, Lou Getz is probably thinking, hey, man, I, my play action is working. If I can run the football. and But they also have evidence when Justin Fields try to do it all, he fumbles a lot. He will turn the ball over a lot. And it's going to be a little chilly. So, But 
that won't bother him. It's just that when he tries to do it all, that's when his defense can take advantage of that. Because the Packers' defense is when you're throwing the football, that's when they excel. Mm -hmm. So my thing is they got to shut that run down, okay? Shut the run down. Take something away and force Justin Fields to have his career day. And you may get some opportunity at some picks, but if they're running – if they're running the ball, getting 100 on the ground, he has another 100 on the ground, one of these uh, over 200 yards rushing deals and maybe 200 passes, it's going to be tough. Yeah. And you possibly can lose that game. But if you force them to just throw the ball 30 times or something like that, you're in good shape. Do you think um, last year's loss to the Lions in this in a must-win game great at question. home great was... Question. Great uh, Great lingers Great. in yes. anyone's mind? In mine. Just deal with me for a minute. Yeah. It's a trigger because you're thinking to yourself, self, you got a Hall of Fame quarterback, and you have everything you need there. And you're at home. Uh, you've won four straight. So, and you're playing in the elements. The Lions was a team that was a dome team. Mm -hmm. Everything was in your favor, and you lose. Your quarterback goes something like three or five uh, interceptions and 25 yards in the fourth quarter. I mean, you had the bubble guts for a whole year. So here you are again in the same position. But this time, it's a learned behavior because I've done this before. But a lot of the guys here, they weren't here last year. Mm -hmm. So they don't even know what that feels like. No, so not. some of the veterans are telling them, man, we had a chance to get that last seed and we, we fainted yeah. on our own you know, field. So, uh, and Joy Love was there. He visualized it. He saw it. And I bet you walking off the field, this ain't going to happen to me. Yeah. If I get a chance to put us in, I want it all on me. But that's when the Bo Meltons of the world, and if you can get Christian Watson back, if you can get Wicks back. Musgrave. Yeah, Musgrave. Oh if you get some of these guys back, it'll make it such easy on that call sheet, Tom. Because I feel sorry for a coach sometimes. He's like, I don't even know who's in the game. Yeah. I'm just going to call my stuff right. and give it to 10. And let him figure it out, which he's been doing a great job of yeah. figuring everybody around. And, yeah. and, and Love doesn't have favorites. He, I mean, I think he and Jaden Reed have a Good special chemistry. connection. Good chemistry. But that doesn't stop him from throwing it to, no. to Bo Melton or Romeo yeah. Dobbs. Or, He'll throw the craft in the flat five times if you leave him open. Oh, there, there was one love perfect <laughs> check down he had where he's looking, looking downfield, and then he's like, oh, yep. I'll throw it to Aaron Jones out here on the flat. Yes. I mean, yes. that was brilliant. Remember, and the beginning he got, like, of the year, yeah, he, he would style. force it and get right. an interception. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I love a lot of growth. people uh, owe him an apology for this year. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be Aaron, Aaron Rodgers yet. We'll see what happens next year. But yeah. he has definitely taken huge steps yeah. this year. Yeah, he's definitely the future. Uh, an extension is coming. But it really helps winning this game, though. Because you could – not him. Yeah. But in the barbershop, Tom, I could say – that you did something last year's team couldn't do. Get in the playoff yeah. and be nine and eight. Right. Not eight and nine to be tied with the Bears. I think I mean, you're almost yeah. like uh, uh, skipping a step this year. That's a you know, great point. By making the playoffs. Great point. Because now you great have point. that experience in the yeah. next year. You know, I, I have a question about these two teams. Now, the Bears... As you said, their defense, it's, it's pretty physical, pretty yes. impressive. <clears throat> yeah. Um, they have the number one pick in the draft, yes. no matter what happens. Yep. Um, plus, they're going to have another high pick. Yep. They got DJ Moore. He's going to be around for a long time. Montez mm -hmm. Sweat, mm -hmm. you know. Who, which of these teams is closer to the Detroit Lions of Week 18 last year, the Packers or the Bears? Oh, boy. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the, the Packers because they have a quarterback who's an ascending guy, and he's been around the same coach for the whole time. Uh, Fields may get another coach you don't know, but if they can go to Fields, Ryan Poles, 
and say, listen, you're our guy. We're going to draft number 18 for Ohio State to give you two weapons moving forward. That's that a, makes them dangerous. What about it? Okay, so tell me yeah. why you wouldn't take Caleb Williams there and I think, have a possible franchise all-pro quarterback. See, that's the thing your scouts got to toy with. Yeah. You'd have to start all over with him. You got to start all. Fields has been there for what four years, yeah. and he's uh, he's an ascending quarterback that maybe you have to get him a new system, a, a new. But if you pass on number eighteen, Marvin Harrison Jr. at wide receiver, you may never find one like him again. That's just us talking. But if you miss on quarterbacks, which they've done with Mr. Biscay, and that would have meant you missed on Justin Fields too. You set your organization back another four years of trying to figure out how do I get people around him? How do I get people around When are you ever going to have the first pick in the draft again? Hopefully you know? never. Yeah. Hopefully never. Yeah. And so but, if you have a chance to get a franchise yeah. quarterback, yeah. and then yeah. you could probably trade fields for something. But you got to start over with a rookie quarterback. I, the kid from Washington, you can get him later if you want to. You got to get 18. You got to get somebody to throw this ball to. You seen it, the size and this kid, I, you know, played against yeah, his dad, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. This, this is a, that's a happy argument because you're thinking Jordan Love kids are growing with him. They're in the same nursery. They're all going to go up to yeah. high school, all the way to college together next four. This is, we got to figure it out. Are we going to keep the coach? Are we going to keep the coordinator? Yes, no, maybe. But if you do get Caleb Williams and you trade Justin Fields, you got to kind of rip the team apart and start all over again. Yeah, yeah. But if you keep him in place and you like the way they finished, you draft 18 from Ohio State okay. and you put these weapons with him and now you can compete with the Packers and the Lions in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. If not, but if you think, in your argument, if you think Caleb Williams is a can't miss number one, but when the last time the number one overall was pretty good? Let's just think about that for a minute. <laughs> when the last time a yeah. number one overall pick was, I mean, we got to go back some Andrew years. Luck, you know, pretty yeah, good. It's okay. Uh, Baker Mayfield didn't. Let's see. Uh, was Manning, Bryce Young. Was Manning overall number one? Uh, Peyton Manning? He was number two, Ryan Leaf. Was See, he was eight, there, you, there you go. <laughs> Bryce Young was yeah. number one. CJ Bryce Young. Stroud was number two. We'll put them on ice because it's not fair. But the last time the number one pick, man, you got to start all over again. You got to be bad. But when you got a guy with that kind of talent staring you in the face, and you yeah. keep Justin Fields, because Justin Fields is something that – you got to put him in an offense like Philly, though, that we can ride and decide, he can run, option, do all these things. It'll be difficult for defense to cover a guy like yeah. that. But Caleb Williams, I don't know what I don't know what he is. I saw a few of his games. Okay. But so we can agree to disagree. All right. On that. Well, yeah, we're yeah. talking a lot about the Bears here. People no, probably want to know about the Packers. Well, it's in the North. You got to play these guys. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So it's true. It's like yeah. uh, who's going to have the best quarterback in the yeah. division? Yeah, we're just doing a draft show within the show. Yeah, that's yeah. talent. You know, <laughs> the Packers have had the best quarterback in the division for yeah. you know thirty years. Yeah. Are they going to have it again? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I think at some point Jared Goff is going, because he's an older guy and they don't have an heir apparent. Jordan Love is the heir apparent. And like you said, which was brilliant, if you make the playoff, you're ahead of the curve. Yeah. On your fourth year quarterback, who, and we all know what quarterbacks get paid. That's the investment. But now, the, when you say the weapons around him, they're here. Yeah. And it don't cost you anything. It didn't cost you like a Devontae Adams salary over $25 million to develop these guys. So right. I'm excited. I'm okay. really excited. So. All right, good. Yeah. All right. So time is here. You got to put it on the line here. <laughs> Listen. What's your score? Here's the thing about this, and I'll make this quick. You got a chance to make history. This team wasn't supposed to be here. You're supposed to be bad. 
some people say you're rebuilding. Maybe they're right. But what um, Brian Gutekunst has done is put you in position to bring in players like Melton, Bo Melton, you know, Heat, and some of these unsung heroes, and you're in a position to do something not a lot of teams can do. And after this weekend, it's win or go home. But this time you're going home for six months. So I think anytime you score into the 30s, I feel good about it. Mm -hmm. So I think the Packers will win 30 to 20 by 10 points. Okay. And I just hope, and this cost, I hope he hit. I hope he hit. How many threes can get into 30? You got to make everything. Yeah, maybe they should start taking they, penalties on, um, you know, delay of games. On, yeah, because uh, special PATs. teams. Because he's missed five PATs and then he hits yeah, the field goals uh, like it's yeah. nothing. Yeah, it kind of makes your eye close like, you know, like. like you, yeah, they can't have that in. And then the in, punt return, turn the ball over. Just don't do that. Yeah. So, but I say 30 to 20. And I'm excited for the future. I'm excited for the fan base. Because they never thought they would get a game like this. Yep. So, yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. well, we yeah. will see you after the Bears game. And don't forget to check with X's nose. We got a lot of stuff uh, yeah. uh, Jordan Love related. Yeah. We even, have a, <laughs> we even have a clip of the defense playing well. Who would have thought? Um, and we're going to look at uh, Jordan Love's footwork, too, which yeah. seems to be a huge topic of discussion. So be well, sure you join us. Yeah, and I want to thank uh, Pick and Save, of course. Um, they, they've done something that I really appreciate. Um, just this last weekend, we gave away Hall of Fame football cards to thank all of our um, customers from 2023. We gave away football cards to your kids to say thank you. We don't take it for granted, but we also appreciate that you can get up to $2 off a gallon of gas. So people tell my gas prices. I got some the other day like 80 cent because I say two dollars for pick and save again if you're in the in the area a Torzala brewery they got some great things coming up um, the leap 36 podcast this week man former uh, Packer and Badger Gary Ellison we'll be kind of breaking down what it's going to take to beat the Bears we're going to talk about some of the old rivalries back when he played in the 80s when all they did was fight mm -hmm. instead of winning games but Again, we appreciate that. And again, thank you for all of the, uh, everybody who's always downloaded us, listened to, you know, five questions. We really appreciate it. So thank you to you, the fan. And we'll see you next week.